What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be episode number five of my theory lessons. And uh, yeah, welcome back to my channel. My name is Franco Torres. For those of you who don't know me, I am a guitar player from Puerto Rico and I do videos every week and I have this series where I talk about theory and I apply it on the guitar so you guys can actually, you know, kind of quite grasp it a little bit better and apply it on your instrument. Because if we don't apply theory, it's just theory. And if we apply it on the instrument, we make music. So before getting into the lesson, I'm going to be playing a chord and you know the drill. Guess it down in the comments below and I'll give you guys the answer at the end of the video. So today's chord is going to be... So now without further ado, let's get into the lesson. Today we're going to be talking about harmony and just basically the first things that you're going to need to know about harmony and kind of how it's built and kind of just, uh, we're going to be talking about chords and we're going to be talking about harmony, the very principles of harmony. So harmony is a concept that's all around in music and all around in everything that we listen and in everything that we do when we're playing an instrument. So uh of course we know the major skills if you don't uh i suggest you check this video out those are the other videos of this series where i talk about theory and i've talked about a few other things that you should know before getting into this so if you don't know what i'm talking about and if you don't know the intervals in the major scale and the major scale, i suggest you watch those and then come back to this video so we know the major scale and uh, we know the c major scale, which is what we're going to be talking about we have c d e f g a and b so those are the seven notes that we're going to be seeing and talking about right now. So that being said, how do we build the chords inside of the scale? So the first chords that we're going to be learning are going to be triads. And uh, these are going to be triads with intervals of thirds. At least the first few chords that we're going to be learning are going to be that way. Of course, then we have other chords that have different intervals inside them and not necessarily thirds. But for now, the first chords that we're going to be learning and the harmony that we're going to be talking about has that specific characteristic. So uh, if we build a, a chord with the C, parting from the C, and we add thirds and we start stacking thirds up to build that chord, we're going to be getting C, E, and G. So C, D, that's not going to be it because that's a second. E, that's a third then F, then G, that's another third from the E. So that's what we get over there. And that's why we build it that way. That being said, that's how we build the other chords inside of that scale. That's why we get the chords that we do out of that particular scale and out of every particular scale. Then we start mixing things up like I already mentioned. But now let's see the other chords that we're gonna be getting out of the major scale, out of the C major scale in this case. Uh, so we get C, E and G, right? That's the chord for C, or at least a triad chord. Uh, then let's go to the D. We would get D, F, and A. As you can see, that's not the same quality of a chord that we have in the other one, but I'll get into that later on. Then we have E, G, and B. Then we have F, A, and C. Then we have G, B, and D. Then we have A, C, and E. Then we have B, D, and F. And then we get back to the C, which would be C, E, and G. So those are the triads that come out of this scale, parting from every note. And those are the groups of note that we get. So uh, that's basically the principle of harmonizing that major scale. Then we start adding another interval on top of that if we want to get uh, more kind of characteristic sound. So we get that other third on top, which we would be getting then the major sevens chords, minor sevens chord, the dominant chords. And that's how we're going to be building these. So before moving on further, let's talk about the quality of these triads. We have a C major triad, D minor triad, E minor triad, F major triad, G major triad, A minor triad, B diminished triad, and then we have a C major triad again. Uh, so those are the triads that we get. And now I'm going to explain a little bit about the construction of each. So the construction of the major triad comes from having a major third interval and then a minor third interval. So from C to E, we have a major third interval. Then from E to G, we have a minor third interval. So that particular mix, uh, having a major third and then a minor third, builds up the major triad. And then the minor triad is different because we have one minor first, and then we have the major triad. So minor and major, and then together we get a minor triad. Then you may be wondering about the B, which has a whole different sound. We have this over here. 
So we have two minor triads over there, and that's why it's called a diminished triad. We have two minor triads stacked on top. When we're done understanding that part of harmony, we can start building on on top of that. So let's see a little bit of what I mean by that. If we have a C major, right? And we want to add that major seven. So what we're going to be doing is adding another third from the G. In this case, we're going to be adding a B. Of course, all of these notes that we're using are not a coincidence. These are all notes that are found in the C major. So that's why we're building these intervals. That's why we're building these trads and we're not using particularly random notes. We're using notes that are predestined basically. And that's what we're using for building these trads and these chords. So now let's see if we start adding and stacking on top of that. I'm not going to go too in depth on that in this video. I'm going to be talking about that later on, but I'm just going to give you kind of a glimpse on that. So maybe you can start applying it on your own. Uh, so for example, if we have a C major trad, right? Uh, we want to have another third on top of that from the last note that we already talked about in that triad, which would be the G. If we add a third, of course, using the notes that are inside of the scale, we have G, A, and B. That's going to be the third, G to B. So then we have this chord, which is a C major 7. So we have a C, E, G, and then a B. Uh, that's where we get that major 7s in there, and that's why we're using that particular note. And then we have a whole array of different ways to play that chord. For example, one of the most common is going to be this one right here. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. And then of course we can invert that and have a whole different bunch of chords that are really cool. So as you can see, we have a whole lot of different voicings and of course there's a lot more. So of course we have a whole bunch of different voicings for that. And then if we want to keep on adding on top of that and adding other flavors, we can keep on stacking those thirds that I already mentioned. So after the B, we would get the D and that's a whole other different interval for that chord. So to play that chord, we're kind of just going to dump one of the notes that we already have, which would be the G, uh, just because this particular voicing sounds really good the way it does. So we're going to be playing this chord right here. That's a C major 9. And the major 9, the name implies that we have the major 7 and then the 9s on top. Of course, the 9s that we're going to get is going to depend on the scale that we're using. So for example, in that particular scale, if we go to the E, we're going to get an E minor 7 flat 9 because that's the notes that are inside of that C major scale. So we have E, G, D, and F. So as you can see, those notes are part of the C major skill. And of course, we're following the same principles that I already mentioned, stacking up thirds. We're, we got rid of the fifth note because that note is just, I mean, it sounds good. It just makes the chord kind of sound fuller, but it's, it's not really an important note for a chord. And we're adding the ninth on top, the ninth, of course, with that particular scale. So uh, that's why we'd get a flat nine over there. And of course, you can keep doing that with the other chords inside of that scale. And we're going to get different intervals in each and every one of them. And then, of course, we can add the 11s after the 9s and, of course, the 13s. These other sonorities, the 11s and the 13s, are kind of going to depend on what type of chord you're playing, what type of sound you're playing, and which chord in that scale you're playing. Not all of them should have those notes because we you know because we can use them and not necessarily they're gonna mean one thing or the other sometimes uh the placement in the chord we're gonna be getting a, a different type of interval instead of that so for example one of the chords that actually can use these is the g because the g is a dominant chord of that progression it's and what i mean by that we get a major chord at first but then the interval that we get from the fifth to the seventh is a minor interval instead of being a major interval so we don't get a g major seven we get a g dominant or a g7 which you may already have heard before so as you can see uh we get a whole different sound out of that and that chord can actually use the 11s or the 13s the 11 is kind of more picky i love how it sounds uh it would be this over here I just love how that sounds and that particular dissonance sounds. I, I love it. And then of course the thirteens, we will get this right here. The thirteens is actually nothing more than just the six interval over on top, one octave higher, and that's why it's a thirteens, not a six. 
And yeah, so we get a whole different array of sounds with each and every one chord. And uh, of course, we get different intervals inside of them. So that's something that you would want to explore. I'm going to be talking about these in future videos. But for now, if you kind of want to get into that, I would say start stacking up those thirds and start studying what kind of intervals you're going to be getting inside of those chords with that particular scale. So for example, if we have a C major scale, we're just going to be using the natural notes because those are the notes inside of that scale and try to keep on stacking those thirds to see what we get. And yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is basically a kind of intro into harmony and an intro into that part of music theory. So that chord is actually a Lydian chord for F. So we're basically just playing an open E, taking that one step higher on the guitar. So instead of having the open E, we would have this. So that kind of makes an F and then we have the B, the second string open and the first string open, which are the sharp four and the major seven. So we can play it with or without the fifth string. If we play it with the fifth string, we're going to get that fifth uh, interval on the bass, which kind of makes an interesting sound. Or without it. just play F Lydian over that. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and all of that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, a quick announcement here, I'm going to be starting a stream, a series of live streams that I'm going to be kind of making once every week, so make sure to tune in to that. It's going to be on Twitch, and I'm going to be talking about guitar, talking about how I record my videos, maybe even record some videos or at least some tracks for some videos and maybe even play some video games and whatnot. And just, yeah, I'll hopefully see you guys over there. I'm going to put more on that on the future videos and I'm actually going to put that on Instagram. If you don't follow me over there, make sure to go check it out so you guys can actually be up to date with everything I'm doing. And I just post more content over there. So yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one.